Also about that time we launched the Leadership Development Program. Actually it started a little early than that. Um, so when I arrived in late 2011 a previous program had uh, started and hadn't been successful. So I certainly had my LNA, my TNA thumped at me <laughs> through the happy or unhappy customers. So the TNA was very easy. Uh, we did a soft launch internally with a, a brand, Leadership Excellence, that came from consultation with stakeholders. And the first thing we launched was a Diploma of Management program. We put 50 people on the program in 2012 and we graduated, oh, 40 something, um, a, high, a high number, we were thrilled to, to have the, the return. Uh, two classes over the whole year and we also in included um, strategic projects and presentations to senior management at the end. So that was the first year. In the second year in 2013 we became a partner of Swinburne's and ran the same program um, with about 30 people. Also in 2013 we launched the senior management development program. We'd done some ad hoc things before but of course as you all know you need to drive the change from the top otherwise it won't work. So that was at grad cert level and we're currently doing my favourite topic with Swinburne financial performance. So you can imagine how riveted, well, no, no, no. And for all the accountants in the room, oh, I apologise. Um, one of, the, brand, one of the, the things that we did early on and Swinburne helped facilitate it, and this is a model from Dr Terry Lee at Swinburne, was um, our CEO, who is a, a great fan of learning, um, identified that we were about here, somewhere around here with our organisation. Uh, and we wanted to end up, ideally, of course, as a, a totally collaborative organisation. Um, in reality, how many organisations actually get there, I think would be an interesting discussion. Uh, so somewhere around here probably would, will be great, I think. Um, yes, unless we're all working for Google or Apple, maybe. Mm. Uh, this is one of the slides from our early senior management outputs where we were discussing our vision and our mission and our purpose and we were quite strategic about what we were doing as well as the leadership changes. And this is one of the boards, the outputs. So we were talking about um, driving that change, that whole purpose of one Esther um, and, and linking that to our overall vision and our mission. With our diploma and our senior management programs, we set strategic projects which are directly linked to the business plan, the annual business plan, or in some cases, the three to five year strategic plan. These are lovely and meaty, and our managers um, have, uh, who don't have the time for business as usual could really sink their teeth into cross-functionally across the organisation to find, um, to, to investigate and find solutions for some of these issues. Some of them um, are very relevant, such as National Triple Zero, that's about to be, the Telstra Triple Zero is about to be um, potentially tendered out by the federal government. Um, flexible working hours for our operational people, um, a lot of our people work 12 hour shifts at the moment. Um, and non-voice, of course, uh, they're two projects that are running this year around what does non-voice handling look like for us. So very, very relevant and um, our leadership team and our board love seeing the output of, of those projects. One of the projects was to develop a leadership capability framework. So um, our group developed the capability across um, 18 core capabilities for the whole of ESTA and it goes across right from frontline staff member up to CEO and that was rolled out. Also in line with the leadership capability framework, we changed the whole performance management um, review, development and review program. This is just a couple of slides from the, the, the staff briefing that we did. And the PDs of course, so the position description and everything that, that went into the PD. So quite, um, quite forensic and, and deep diving around the digging around um, processes but around behaviours. Because as most of you know, if you're trying to achieve change, you've got to model that behaviour right from the top down from the beginning and be quite clear about accountabilities with that. Um, this is a uh, review of our return on investment for our diploma program, which was um, 2013 and we're thrilled that we achieved 8%. Uh, there was one girl who we know very well who dropped down, who shall remain nameless and we, anyway, we'll <laughs> 
that was a bit puzzling after a year of um, development. But we did a pre and post training skills assessment. The manager, the, the staff had to self-assess, but the, the person who did their review had to agree on the, the form and we, we tracked that. We're doing the same this year and we are about to do the post skills assessment this year, so we're looking forward to seeing those results in October. But we've tracked um, in this last year across subject matter modules and people, some people improved more than 20%, so um, that was quite exciting. For the bottom line ROI around the bottom, it's challenging. A lot of ours is behaviourally related with the tracking. For those of you who are L&D folks, Kirkpatrick Level 4 is challenging. Um, this year we're going to be, we're doing the pre and post skills assessment around the leadership capability framework. So that will um, give us a much greater insight and will also help us then target and tailor specific training programs around any areas that are, are rating lower. Another thing we did was moved out to Tally Ho. So our head office, our support office was up here in Spring Street and our CEO wanted to put us in with one of our comm centres. So we were, were firmly right beside our operation. This was the, um, the message and we moved to ABW, to activity based working. So no offices. For a government organisation, no offices, no hierarchy. That was an interesting um, challenge. And we also moved um, 45 minutes away from the city, uh, not on a tram line. So a whole, a whole change challenge for people that used to public transport to work, etc. Um, so I'll show you, these are our neighbourhoods. We developed, did some research, consulted with people and developed neighbourhoods based on the nature of our work. So when I get to work tomorrow morning, I need to think about what I'm doing with my day and I need to choose the neighbourhood based on the work I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, I might sit in collaborative if I want um, to collaborate with different people um, and that's often where John and I usually sit. Um, focused and quiet are often for areas such as our corporate secretary, our company secretary, payroll, etc. Um, we also have a lovely big break room and a library. So if I really am designing training material, I'll lock myself away in the library. There's no phones there and it's quiet, so I'll, I'll get a lot of work done there. This is the um, change training. So we changed, tr cha trained everyone before the move. Firstly managers, and these were the themes, and then staff. Two separate training, but at the end of the staff um, training, we brought in the managers at the end to so they, they were very accountable for the, the change and supporting their people through it. So they're the themes that we covered and that was designed quite specifically once again. Um, I'm going to use the contextualisation word later which I know Swinburne um, giggle at, I giggle with Swinburne because I, we, we tend to over contextualise things. We find for us if you deliver generic material it just doesn't resonate, grab, Achieve, achieve what we want to do. Because we're tra some of these key programs are around organisational change, you've got to make it relevant for the people that are going through the program. This is our activity-based working environment. So that is our collaborative, these are both our collaborative areas. Um, that's our break room with a few little quiet corners for one-on-ones. And we now um, have some focus groups going. So we've been there for six months and some key focus groups are being brought together to work on some specific areas, um, particularly around flexible working because we have some flexible working around the fact that people are now um, commuting potentially from Sunbury to um, Burwood for work. This has been a Swinburne production.